This is the Narrowgate News Show with host Dennis Cole. Narrowgate News recognizes that history happens once, but Bible truth is being expressed by God, the Holy Spirit, through his reporters right now. This same Holy Spirit has inspired Narrowgate News to report and interpret what is truly happening in our world today. Host Dennis Cole has a college degree in literature and acting. He's also a seminary graduate, a professional actor, author, and ordained minister. We now present to you Dennis Cole and the Narrowgate News Show. Thank you for participating with us. Hello. I am very glad to be with you. Narrowgate News. Dennis Cole, I'm your host. and. We have a very special guest today. God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Amen. That was my verse this morning. I don't want to forget to say that. God shall supply all your needs, Eduardo, according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. All your needs. Sometimes uh, you got a show where you need uh, all the help you can get. Sometimes you got a day where you're not sure. Sometimes you're so darn sure. And you wish after the fact that you prayed this. We don't know exactly what's going to happen. But we can connect with the living God and connect like an athlete connecting the barrel of the bat. Boom. A line drive to right field. Double. I played against Art Dittmar's team uh, in college. 1969, I got a line drive. One of my favorite pitchers from the old days when I was a Yankees fan. I still am a Yankees fan. But uh, I got a line drive to the barrel of the bat. That's how you want to be with God. Connect. Boom. I want to uh, show you a clip right now. It's uh, take about two minutes. Ron Carter and I, well, Ron, actually, he put together who's on first. Who's on first? Abbott and Costello. We want you to see this right now. Take about two minutes, thanks. Now, on the St. Louis team, we have uh, who's on first, what's on second, I don't know who's on third. That's what I want to find out. I want you to tell me the names of the fellas on the St. Louis I'm, team. I'm telling you, who's on first, what's on second, I don't know who's on third. Do you know the fellas' names? Yes. Well, then who's playing first? Yes. I mean, the fellas' name on first base. Who? The fella playing first base for St. Louis. Who? The guy on first base. Who is on first? Well, what are you asking me for? I'm not asking you. I'm telling you who is on first. I'm asking you who's on first. That's the man's name. That's whose name? Yes. Well, go ahead and tell me. Who? The guy on first. Who? The first base. Who is on first? Have you got a first baseman on first? Certainly. Then, then who's playing first? Absolutely. When you pay off the first baseman every month, who gets the money? Every dollar of it. And why not? The man's entitled to it. Who is? Yes. So who gets it? Why shouldn't he? Sometimes his wife comes down and collects it. Who's wife? Yes. After all, the man earns it. Who does? Absolutely. Well, all I'm trying to find out is what's the guy's name on first base? Oh, no, it's... no. What is on second base? I'm not asking you who's on second. Who's on first? That's what I'm trying to find out. Well, don't change the players. I'm not body. changing nobody. Take it easy. What's the guy's name on first base? What's the guy's name on second base? I'm not asking you who's on second. Who's on first? I don't know. He's on third. We're not talking about him. How did I get on third base? You mentioned his name. If I mention a third baseman's name, who did I say is playing third? No, who's playing first? Stay off of first, will you? Well, what do you want me to do? Now, what's the guy's name on third base? Well, what's on second? I'm not asking you who's on second. Who's on first? I don't know. He's on third. There I go, back on third again. Well, I can't change their names. Will you please stay on third base, Mr. Broadhurst? Please. Now, what is it you want to know? What is the fella's name on third base? What is the fella's name on second base? I'm not asking you who's on second. Who's on first? I don't know. Third, third base. base. Randy Miller, a few things about Randy Miller. Okay, New Jersey Advanced Media for NewJersey.com, NJ.com. Randy's a native of Jeanette, Pennsylvania, a city 25 miles east of Pittsburgh. He's been writing about sports since age 15. When you get to know him, you'll see how. He's got the inner monologue of a sports writer. You know, the Bible is the greatest thing, but the next thing is baseball. That's how that's how true to life baseball is. He's got both. When he was covering high schools at Pitt football for the Jeanette News News uh, News uh, Dispatch, so he's he's been writing for his high school at age 15. But since 1996, Randy has been a major league baseball beat writer, except for three years when he covered hockey. He was on the Philadelphia Phillies beat from 1996 to 2011. And the last eight years, he has been a New York Yankees beat writer 
for New Jersey Advanced Media, Newark. That's new N E W A R K, Newark, New Jersey. Newark's Star Ledger, otherwise known as NewJersey.com. That's where I get him off my cell phone. Known for his dogged, oh, he's dogged, reporting skills. He's got skills and he's got sensitivity. Randy has won numerous writing awards over the years. He's been a Baseball Hall of Fame voter since 2006. That impressed me when I read that. Away from the ballpark, Randy enjoys steak and Italian dinners. Maybe his wife's Italian. In the, in the New York area, you, you don't say they are born in Italy. You say, are you Italian? Are you Italian? And there's a lot of Italian people, in, uh, including my, my mother. God bless her. She's in heaven. Uh, she's very Italian. Uh, he, he, he likes country music and traveling. <laughs> I hope he likes traveling. I think he spent 220 nights with the Yankees last year traveling. Uh, and he especially likes to go to Fort Lauderdale Beach. Uh, I want to have Randy come on right now. Randy. Hi, Randy. Hi. Quite hey, a welcome. Hey, did you, hear, you. Oh, you heard that. You heard that. My wife is not Italian. I'm half Italian. My mother's maiden name is a great Italian name. My last name is Miller. My, my mother's maiden name is Castellano. So that's oh. where the Italian comes in. Uh, but my wife oh. is a very good uh, cook. Uh, this is my ninth year on the Yankees, by the way. Ninth year with the Yankees. Wow. Wow. Okay. I want to talk to you about a number of things. Uh, I have to say one thing about myself, though. Uh, our followers on... Uh, we've been getting a couple of thousand people uh, viewing our stuff lately. You know, I'm really glad about that. Uh, and anybody that knows Narragate News knows that, you know, I'm, we're very cutting edge on current events, very cutting edge on uh, the state of the art of God, who, who's God, what he's doing today. <laughs> he, he's really active. Uh, but and we, we, you know, we, we just get right to it. And it's it's fun. But what people might not know is that any spare time I have, I watch Yankee games. I watch them all, except, you know, in case I, I got to be traveling or I can't do it. And I encountered Randy Miller uh, this year, although I knew the name, but I, I responded to one of his articles uh, and uh, he got back to me and then we talked and we've been talking ever since. But uh, yeah, I, I watched the batting averages. I watched the game. I know the game really well, Randy. Uh, and, and I see life. Baseball is very true to life. First base, second base, third base. And what, what, what's, what, what's the reward? After third base. Oh, um, what? You score a run. You score a run. <laughs> I love you. See, you, you're the sports writer. I'm the poet. Home. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us about yourself, Randy. And I just gave a little bio. Tell, give me the inside, uh, the insider um, bio. Well, I've been a sports fanatic. I played ball when I was a little boy. I thought I was going to be a big leaguer when I hit those 17 home runs at 11 years old. And by the time I was 14, I was writing about my games and I was a one tool player. I could field the ball and do nothing else. <laughs> so I got lucky. Uh, I actually worked for a daily newspaper, not a school paper at 15 yeah. years old. I went up to a sports writer one time who was at a game and he was keeping score wrong and I couldn't figure out. He goes, well, you cover the game. Next thing you know, I'm, I'm going to the game. Uh, and a, and a funny story, uh, um, when I was, uh, a news, I was a newspaper carrier at uh, probably 13 years old. And I sold the most subscriptions. I came up from a, a pretty poor, rough neighborhood, and it was tough to go to games a lot. And I lived 30 miles away from Pittsburgh. And uh, I uh, worked for this, the newspaper. I was a newspaper carrier. And they said, if you uh, get five new subscriptions, you get to go to a game. And I did it in like 25 minutes. So I got to go to the game, wow. and I sold the most. And my prize was I get to go on the field. And I didn't know it. There was a young writer from the newspaper who was shadowing me and wrote this full page, this huge article on the front page, a day Randy Miller will never get forget. And it talked about how I knew the ball players better than most sports writers. And I, if you remember, Willie Stargell was with the Pirates in the, in the 70s. Definitely. And he used to give these stars out for achievements. And I got a ball. Uh, they found me in the Giants dugout. And they quoted me. I had to get Willie McCovey's autograph. I asked Stargell for a star, and Stargell said, I'm sorry, I'll sign your ball, kid, but you got to earn the star. A year later, I'm working for this newspaper. I tell my boss this story. A couple months down the road, he says, hey, I got permission to get you into the press box. Oh, my God, I'm so excited. I get to go to a pirate game. I go to the press box, and uh, 
before then, he made me do these Monday morning features on hard players. I did one on Dave Parker, one on Willie Stargell, uh, Kent DeColvey. That, that was their their championship. Uh, we are families. Uh, World Series team in 79. This is about 19. Our family. Yep. This is before they won, though. Um, yep. <laughs> so I go to the game. He says, wait by the elevator here. I get to go in the press box. Uh, I'll be about in 15 minutes. I'm waiting. And all of a sudden, he comes out with Willie Stargell, hold the copy of that article, and said, kid, I remember you, and stuck a star in my hat. So wow. I think of a year in my life changed from being a newspaper carrier with the dream. What am I going to do? I grew up in a, a rough neighborhood where there were uh, shootouts. Wow. I remember a kid got shot in a belt buckle, next door neighbor, raped, fired down the street. A kid hung himself. And oh. you wonder, you know, and I, this rough neighborhood. And uh, there I am setting up my career at age 15, went to University of uh, Pittsburgh, get hired by the uh, second biggest paper in, in Pittsburgh during my senior year. So I pushed back my graduation. I graduated in the summer instead of uh, the spring, because I was working, driving 30 uh, miles back and forth each day to do the agate pages. And uh, it's been tremendous. There's not a lot of money in sports writing, but uh, I used to fly on the Pittsburgh Steelers team plane for a few years. I spent a day where I hung out with Muhammad Ali and his family. I spent a day when in the press box for an hour, just me and Ted Williams talking baseball. Oh. Um, so me being this baseball fanatic kid that kept score of pirate games, uh, many, many, like I kept score almost every game as a kid. And so I was big into statistics. I thought I knew the game. And then you realize when you cover baseball that the fans don't know the game. You think you know the game. And here's a guy I kept score years and years and played yeah. ball. And then when you go sit in those managers' office and you find you learn why certain guys aren't playing, why this move is made. And being around that, that, that's what I love. And my friendships that I built over the years, it amazes me how I'll get a text out of nowhere from Reggie Jackson. There's, I'm, I'm a kid and I hated Reggie because I'm a Pittsburgher, but Reggie, you see this cocky guy. And then yeah. I see Reggie, he was with, he's with the Astros now as a special advisor. Yeah, I know. He was with the Yankees oh, yeah. for years. And I'd see him, you know, I, I like going to minor league games too every now and then to check out the top prospects, do lengthy stories. And Reggie would be there taking kids out to dinner to teach them what it's like to be a ball player, to teach them what it's like to be a man. And uh, in this crazy world that we're in now, I mean, as you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a strong Christian also. Um, there's, there's a lot of bad things going on in the world, but I love embracing when you see an Aaron judge who I with every day and you see what kind of person he is or how a Reggie is working with young kids. And those, that's the priceless stuff that I get out of working this tough demanding job. That's gotten harder and harder with the newspaper business dying in this internet. Hey, I used to get out. My deadlines was 11, 1130. You're out, you go get a burger or a pizza. Or you're back in your hotel by midnight. Now I'm working till three, four in the morning because it's all about page views. And instead of writing two stories a day, you're all writing sometimes six, seven stories a day. When Judge Aaron Judge gets hit by a pitch in uh, Tuesday night's game at Yankee Stadium, gets hit in the hand, I'm immediately writing something, updating it, getting something online because you're worried about page views. You're writing something after the game on it. And then the next, while everyone else is going home for the smaller papers or the papers that just write two stories, I'm at the hotel starting from scratch two big stories at midnight that I get done at three in the morning. So it's, it's, it's wow. a tough job, a lot of stress, not much sleep. I've never tried coffee in my life. Um, I don't know how I, I, I get by, but the days that the friendships that I have, um, uh, I, I, I have a lot of friends in the game that are, that are Christians that I can help you get on the show. One of my best friends is a guy named Glenn Wilson, who uh, uh, was with the Phillies and all-star wrote a, a, he's a pastor in in Houston. Does uh, officiate some weddings, uh, preaches, goes to uh, goes to uh, prisons and preaches about the Lord. And he wrote a book called Heading Home. Um, I can get you on the show, and you would love to hear the story. I like to have him. We like talk have about him. God all the time. There's a guy who played baseball, and I'm a baseball writer, and we call him. We just we talk about uh, God when we have these long phone calls. Randy, I, I'm having a, a sense of something that I hadn't before. I know. Uh, one of the themes I wanted to talk to you about in our short time together is the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Uh, that's right out of the Bible, of course. Um, the love of money. If you desire to be rich, you'll fall into temptation and a snare for the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Uh, 
obviously baseball is a child's game. It's a boy's game. I, 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 I have enthusiasm for it. Like a, like a little leaguer still. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm an old guy, you know, so old. I, I'm, it's embarrassing. <laughs> no, but it, it's, 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 it's a childlike thing, but here you just mentioned uh, Willie Stargell. I remember uh, as a fan, he brought that team together in 1979 when they beat the Orioles for the uh, World Series. We are family. They 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 capitalized on that. We are family, and he he brought this family thing going on. Now this is <coughs> an element that transcends your contract. Now since 1979, uh, salaries have gone way up. Way I mean, let, uh, let's face it. But look at the dynasty of the Yankees, uh, 1996 through uh, really through 2001, if you will. They won the pennant that year. They didn't win the World Series in 01. But uh, that was a real dynasty. They were making a lot of money, but they were playing like a team. And you just get to – you mentioned Aaron Judge. I want to talk to you about him a little bit because it really fits the theme where I want to talk to you about. Aaron is uh, – for those of you who aren't baseball fans, Aaron Judge is like – was he 6'7 or 6'8? Six seven. Six seven. He's a giant of a man uh in more ways than one. He's got a heart is so big, it's quite clear. He's he's truly a leader. Um, I guess he's a black guy, he's African American on one on one one side, right? He is mixed. He was adopted at one day old by a white family, two teachers, right. conservative family, living right. in California, an hour uh, ninety-five miles east of uh of San Francisco. Right. And uh He's uh, picked in the first round by the Yankees. I think it was the 32nd pick, uh, which is the last pick. He was but the he, third first round pick that year. Third first they, round pick? They took a Notre Dame, uh, they took a Notre Dame uh, third baseman ahead of him and a pitcher. Yeah, I can't uh, remember his name. Yeah. And then they took him. Anyway, we'll look at all the other teams that didn't take Judge at all. Anyway, he. but what, what Judge is, enters the scene, he's the guy. He's a God guy. He sings God Bless America. He's got to have Volpe or uh, or uh, his buddy. He uh, Rizzo, Volpe, they stand with him. And when you stand, stand with him, him, you must sing. That's his rule. You must and, sing. That's his and rule. Judge, uh, nobody will defy Judge in that clubhouse. He is the best team leader that I've been around in my 40, 40 years as a sports writer. That is quite a statement. <laughs> now, if there's a trend away from goodness and kindness – I'm thinking of that character in Wall Street, uh, Greco or Gleco. Greed is good. <laughs> Michael Douglas, greed is good. <laughs> you know, greed is good. I, I mean, uh, you know, there's a lot of, I mean, the, 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 they're making so much money, but relative to 20 years ago, I suppose it's just as much now, but it's really crazy. Um, but you got Aaron Judge, who's making almost as much as anybody. He's like the top three salaries are in the world, but he still has this something that's greater than money going on true or false i want, I want to hear from you now true um but i think in baseball that there's a time for money and a time for playing in the off season everyone is greedy i think in most cases the players are chasing the money but once they get into training camp the money doesn't matter and whether you're on the pirates or the yankees there's a sole focus to win. I've covered a lot of bad teams. I was a Philly writer for for 17 years, and uh, I think they had a lot of last place teams with Terry Francona managing for them, who I think is going to be a Hall of Fame manager. Terry and I are both Pittsburghers. We know each other very well. He was young at the time. Um, but those teams wanted to win. They played together. Um, when you win, um, you come together more. I always hear, oh, this team's flat or this team doesn't care. You know, it, there's a lot of luck in baseball. Look, you hit the ball uh, on the nose 100 miles an hour. If it goes right at the third baseman, uh, oh, it, it's an out. You know, the guy stinks. He's 0 for 4 today. And then he gets four uh, broken bat singles, and they, oh, he's great. So there's a lot of luck involved in baseball. Uh, look. Does it average <laughs> out? Do you believe it averages out? I, I, I think that the talent um, – when you have more talent, you get more luck because you're hitting the ball on the nose more. You're you're making better pitches more. So I think that the Yankees have more talent. They have more money, so they have more room to make a mistake uh, than other teams. 
But that said, Aaron Judge, this leadership that how every time there's a new player, like for instance, uh, on Tuesday night, the Yankees, Anthony Rizzo, their three time all star first baseman, is on the injured list, breaks his arm in in uh, Fenway Park last Sunday, goes on the injured list, going to miss a couple months. That's Judge's best friend. They joke that their dogs are best friend, their wives are very close. It's a big loss because that's kind of the, the 1A lieutenant on the team to judge his leadership. And they bring in this kid, Ben Rice, who uh, two weeks ago was in double A, goes up to triple A for 11 games, good hitter, learning first base, his first position's catcher, and Judge is welcoming him. And that's the way it is. When Judge comes in and he knows about he, – he'll watch videos. He'll, he'll read bios so he can know something about him. If it's the, the 13th pitcher on a team, same thing. That doesn't happen everywhere. Um, if you watch Judge, sometimes you'll see that when he's in the outfield, he will he will play catch with a little kid. Instead of you know how they, they warm up before before the inning with the center fielder loosening their arm, sometimes you'll find a kid in the stands behind in the first row and play catch with this kid. I'm like, I can't believe it. I I'd never seen that. And he'll throw the ball seven or eight times to this kid, and it's amazing to watch like a little eight-year-old kid loosening Judge's arm up. One time I said to him, where did this come from? Like, I'd never seen this. And Judge said to me, when I was a little boy in Linden, California, and I spent a day in his town and talked to teachers, friends, uh, coaches, uh, and he was like this as a kid. Anyway, Judge's parents were teachers, and his dad was in a neighboring school, but the head coach of the basketball team at his future high school. And Aaron, little young Aaron, at seven, eight years old, was the ball boy. And when basketball teams come out before games or for practice, they do this layup drill. They, they all come out in a row out of the clubhouse, and they do this tip drill off the backboard. And then finally, they do it on the other side, left-handed. Then they put it in the basket, and then they took their shots. Well, they let little Aaron, the ball boy, lead the drill. And he said, I always remember what it was like to be the little kid and feel like the big guy. And now I know when I do that to a little kid – that I know what that kid feels. If you watch Aaron Judge give an autograph, it's different than most other people. He'll get down. He's 6'7". He'll get down very low so it's face-to-face, -face, and then he gives the kid a moment. Who's your favorite player? You are. Oh, me. Are you kidding? Me. Oh, my God. And then what position do you play? Yeah. How's your arm? And makes it a moment. And it's This right. guy is truly unbelievable. So the money aspect – Hey, Judge got okay. He didn't come back to the Yankees till he got his extra forty million, but he's leading. And when they're playing, it's not about money. Okay, I'm with you. I'm with you on that. And you could, it's possible to get a lot of money and not be greedy. About, but it's very, it's possible to get very little money and be very greedy too. It's it's relative. I know what you're saying. You're saying they want to get as much as they can get because it's available. I suppose. Uh, that's true. I mean, you, you know, I, if I got a chance to get more or left, I would want more. You mentioned the many different, since it's I started covering about. baseball in 96, the minimum salary was 130 and yeah. now it's 770. So that shows you the yeah. difference since, since I've been covering ball. But, but, but let's go back to Aaron Judge. He's down, he's down real low, signing an autograph. You can tell his signing of an autograph is different from anybody else. He professes to be a Christian for just, just for the record. He is. And he's yeah. showing it. And who, created the whole universe, everything and everybody, okay? But who is it that goes down on his knees to wash feet? Who is the greatest servant of all? And, you, you know, uh, you, you, you've you heard me tell you, Randy, that I'm, a, I'm an actor. I've done 2,000 events the last 20 some odd years. I, that's my passion. And what I do here is more of that. It, it's, it's, but it, the key thing is identifying with the person you're with. Feeling his pain or his joy, it's empathy. Uh, the Greek word is inside skin. It's such a great word to describe Jesus' empathy. He became sin because he had empathy. He he got inside human skin, died for, and you know, died for the sins, so we wouldn't have to go through it. So when we see an example of that happening, I believe that transcends even the greed that people might have. If there's something transcendent and it happens, and that's what turns me on about the game of baseball when I see it. I'm looking for it all the time. That's what I wanted to say. What do you think? You see more games than I do. What's the question? The question is, 
<laughs> I gave a long wind up and it was a slow pitch. <laughs> 45 miles an hour. No, what I'm saying is there's something transcendent. And when I see Aaron Judge getting down low, is six foot seven and signing an autograph. It's it's very symbolic. It's a living metaphor of a guy that is transcending whatever fame or money he has, and he's just there. And I believe that is what catches. That's the spirit that catches people. It it catches atheists. An atheist can get the spirit of God, and he likes it. He doesn't. He might not call it Jesus or God, but he likes it. That's what I'm saying, and that's what work what works for baseball. I believe that's why you want to why, why you're a sports writer still. Judge is a rarity in this game, and uh, right. you don't see that often. And that's why his jersey is the number one selling jersey up there with uh, Otani, who's a freak of nature in a different way. The yes. judge can relate to everyone. His ability. Uh, when I went to his hometown. Uh, and he found out I was going there. All he cared about was, did my hometown, uh, did they do me proud? Did, did oh. what, How did they treat you? He was just worried really? that a visitor from his town was going to be treated right. And he was so happy to hear when I I, uh, I went to the school and met with the athletic director who brought me on to the football field during wow. a practice. And I met with coaches and I'm wow. leaving, walking out to the parking lot to go meet some other people. And... Uh, the athletic director is running out, chasing my car with hats and T-shirts from Linden High School, Linden Baseball, wow. Linden Athletics, wow. and Judge. That made him feel good. Like, okay, there's 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 someone who I'm with every day here. I'm, I'm glad you made, you did it did it right. Uh, it's it's he, he's amazing to be around, and those relationships. Uh, Jim Tomey was like that. Jim Jim Tomey's yeah. another Christian guy. Yeah, I covered him in Phillies for a few years. And when you're born into Jim Tomey's family, your 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 present is is uh, a college education anywhere. Jim Tomey has this nephew named Brandon. He's a he's he has a twin sister, by the way, who's a, a tall lady. He has a and a bunch of brothers, a few brothers. He has a brother, a, a son named a, a, a nephew named Brandon, who had a swimming pool accident, uh, who uh, par- quadriplegic for life. And this kid's in the hospital, and Tommy's bringing players in Chicago. He was with the Indians at the time. And uh, one time he says, it's a funny story. He says, look, next time I come in, and he has this country accent. When I come into town with the Indians, I'm going to try to get an ambulance and get you to go to Chicago for a game. And this kid's 14 years old and has a great attitude like his Uncle Jim Tommy, one of the greatest home run hitters ever, over 600 homers. So they come in later in the year. He gets permission to get this ambulance to take him to, to the White Sox stadium. And he says, okay, Uncle Jim, I saw that Babe Ruth movie. Babe, and then Jim goes, no, 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 no. He goes, no, 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 no. Babe Ruth didn't even know that kid. And he had a home run for him. I'm your nephew. I want two homers. And he's like, oh, Brandon, I'll, I'll try to hit you when I'll try. <laughs> Darned if he doesn't hit two home runs, first two times up. And Brandon that- tells me that he had <laughs> – an experience that that he feels like the Holy Spirit raised him out of his wheelchair after the second homer. And he wow. says, I was clapping above my wheelchair and I looked down and saw my body in this wheelchair. I was clapping the second home run. And and wow. he's on the phone with me telling me the story, giving me chills. Wow. Uh, That's uh, cool. Another guy who's just an amazing guy who, who makes players better. I didn't, I didn't vote for Kurt Schilling for the Hall of Fame, and I'm really, really far distantly to Schilling. Uh, and he thinks it had something to do with politics or both conservative, not true. Uh, not a good guy, Kurt Schilling. But one of the things that put me over the top not voting for him was he was the opposite of Judge and and Tommy and made his pl- teammates worse. I've seen him chastise teammates, younger teammates. Instead of walking up to them and helping him, he huh. would hurt them. And in by saying things, so the character clause comes into that Hall of Fame, and and we have to weigh that. Are they a good person in addition to the stats? Are they are they making their team better? Are they losing games or winning games because of their presence? And I think that okay. ties into some of the things that you were talking about about Aaron Judge. I've got two two quick well I, I, two <coughs> things I want to say before we uh, end our interview. Uh, one, I want to make a comment. I'll just get your comment on it. I know uh, 
the owner of the Yankees, Hal Steinbrenner, uh, son of George Steinbrenner, he, um, you know, George is known for spending and Hal is known for being cheap. I, I, that's not true, I know. Uh, but the the Yankee payroll is very, very high. It's over $300 million. And he came out and he said, we're going to cut back starting next year. We're going to start cutting back. And it's not sustainable to keep these high salaries. I just wanted to bring up something, you know, uh, the value of the dollar is going down. The BRICS nations are, the petrodollar is going away. Uh, money, dollar is less and less. Inflation is higher and higher. Uh, do you think that Hal Steinbrenner is aware, uh, thinking in terms of, you know, money might not always be around uh, for everybody whenever we want it because the dollar itself uh, will not have the value central bank district uh, digital currency uh i mean we're talking about the banks running the show i i wanted to just say enough to say what do you think do you think house time renter is aware i think he's aware of everything but that comment followed a comment earlier in the week where he told uh uh someone from the yes network which yankees own uh where he was all excited about potentially he wanted juan soto to be a yankee for life Right. Juan Soto's agent is Scott Boris, who I'm hearing is going to ask for $550 million and expect to get it. And I right. think after that, he realized, oh, my God, I got the fans now thinking I'm going to spend twice as much money or close to twice oh. as much money on Aaron Judge. And when he says I'm going to cut, he's not going to cut payroll to where he's anywhere other than first or second or third in payroll. But. When people say hell's cheap, that's ridiculous. He's spending right. more than more than his father did, and his father didn't have to deal with the luxury tax penalties that they have now. The Yankees have had more luxury tax uh, that they paid than all 29 other teams combined. When George started paying ta ta uh, some luxury tax at the very end of his career before hell took over, uh, there was not the the second and third levels of luxury tax to where when the Yankees, when there was rumors, the Yankees were going to sign Blake Smell, Snell last winter, the uh, reigning uh, AL Cy Young winner, uh, NL Cy Young winner um, with San Diego. Uh, if, if they would have gave him a one year, $25 million contract, the Yankees were so far above the luxury tax that it would have been double. It would have had to pay $50 million for one year. So when he says he's cutting back, he's just not going to go, crazy over the luxury tax. And I think that was just a little bit of a warning to the Yankees. Like, look, if one Soto is going to try to get $550 million, he's probably going to have to go to the Mets. And he was just, I think some of his people were just, hey, let's even this out a little bit. That's where I think that came from. Okay. Uh, one more question. Tell us about Amari Telemaco. Amari Telemaco was a journeyman pitcher from the Phillies Cubs not a great player, a great human being. Amari and I uh, uh, are close friends. He's from He's Dominican, Dominican Republic. Republic. Amari grew up in a family that uh, practiced voodoo, or she called it devil worshiping. And he would tell me a story of how uh, I think he had maybe nine, ten brothers and sisters, and that they would put this, they would slaughter a goat in the house and put the blood on them for protection. And one sister was Christian. And when Amari was 15 years old or so, he's the he's known he's going to be a, a professional prospect, and and a lot of women were chasing him, and and uh, he's leading this life that is not a Christian life. And his one sister, who's Christian, kept saying, "This isn't right. This isn't right. I, I don't think I don't think you should be living this life." And one day he woke up and decided he didn't want to live this life. And it's Dominican Republic. It's a rainstorm. The power's out. Wow. Um, I think he goes out and walking in the streets without shoes. He goes into the first church he comes to and there's a voodoo ceremony going on. The second one's closed. He goes into a third one and there's a voodoo ceremony going on on the right side and a Christian in the left. And he hears this, this, this preaching in these Bible verses and he goes up and gets saved. And now Amore Telemaco, in addition to being a Pittsburgh Pirates minor league pitching coach, is a pastor who teaches in the Dominican Republic. And we had lost touch for a while. But I remember when I wrote this story, when I was a Philly writer, I wrote how he told his teammates on Easter Sunday this story, and they were crying. And I was getting emails from all over the place from people telling me, this is unbelievable hearing this story. I need to change my ways. 
well, we had lost touch for six or seven years. And doesn't he get, he, he, he reaches out to me. All right. I found him on Easter uh, a couple years ago and I ended up writing a, another story and now we're in touch again. Uh, I'm right. gonna, if you have interest, I can get him on your show. He, he's to. a spectacular man who will, will tell stories of, of his uh, growth as a person. And it doesn't matter that he wasn't a great player because he was a good player and that, that got him to where people will look up to him and now he's he's preaching about the Lord and and uh, the, amen to that. That's the deeper team. I think of the Brett Gardner's. Uh, those those of you know who he is. He was number eleven. He was a, a faithful Yankee <coughs> for many years, and he he didn't get the he didn't get the, the headlines, but he he was so much a part of every win that they could get. Uh, these are the deeper the deeper winning elements. These Amari Talamacos and your your newspaper. Uh, I read your article. You know, Newark uh, Star Ledger. You know, you you wrote about him. Uh, the same thing. The same testimony you gave me about him. You wrote in your, in your newspaper. That's a win, win, win. That's good. Everybody wins when uh, we play uh, with the Lord as the captain. And whether we know it or not, some of us who do know it. It helps us to know it, uh, not to flaunt it, but to absolutely know it. Uh, there's a verse in the Bible, uh, Randy, to know this love that surpasses knowledge, right out of Ephesians chapter 3. When we know it, we communicate it, and we say it, but we demonstrate it even more than we say it, but we say it, and we demonstrate it. And I love baseball, and I think that you really got a real feel. I mean, I, I when I responded to you, uh, you said something, and I responded to it, and I've seen it in your writing. Uh, I know that uh, there's there's players on the team that that are that are Christians, that are believers, and there's some that are probably considering, you know, what it all means and looking at the leadership of some of the leaders, uh, Holmes, and uh, he's a pitcher for the Yankees, and of course Aaron Judge and others. And Clay Holmes' but, father is a pastor. Yeah. I just think I told you on the phone. He made the All-Star game. He's one of the best closers in baseball, and we talk about that. It's funny. When you came on the intro to me, you are talking about how your pastime is baseball. Well, my pastime is is finally being able to have the Bible explained to me. I, I go to uh, the Calvary uh, Chapel, Calvary Christian Church in Philadelphia, and uh, our pastor, Joe Folk, who's been there 40 years and started it, uh, Learned off the uh, the guy from California. Um, uh, what's his Chuck. name? Chuck. Chuck Smith. Right? Yep. Yeah. And uh, so now, ten years they go from the Bible. It takes them ten years from and Genesis was like forty two different hour sessions. And I'm listening and I'm like, oh my god, now I'm learning. So that my spare time is trying to learn the Bible and understand and become a better Christian. Well, <laughs> yours is baseball, so we're coming. <laughs> got the whole circle going here. <laughs> I was writing for the Woodstock Townsman uh, in the 80s, just after, a few years after I got saved in 83. And <coughs> I'm telling a story about the day that I switched from baseball to Bible. I I, I wrote about it. it happened to me. I, I, I don't remember what it was, but I'm talking about taking a shower. And in the middle of the shower, it, it occurred to me, it, it broke, it occurred to my heart that I love the Bible more than baseball. It took me to age 37 to break through. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. We're, we're, because we're, of you, I can watch baseball. I can really, and now I can have you on the show. And maybe, you know, if we get some of your friends on, I'd love it. But I, I tell you, Randy, I just love talking to you. I, you're, you're, a real, you're a real brother. I love you. I appreciate you having me on. Uh, anytime you need me, oh, reach out to me. Well, God bless you. And God bless your, uh, your newspaper, Newark. Star Ledger and uh, NJ.com is my website. My Twitter X is uh, Randy J. Miller. If anybody wants to follow me or send me a message and I usually respond and answer my questions. So not only um, that, it's going to be on when we, uh, it's all going to be on the uh, written out. Ron Carter is going to put it out there for you, but uh, say it again though. New Jersey. My, um, I work at the Newark Star Ledger newspaper, the biggest paper in New Jersey which is uh, nj.com, like NJ New Jersey. And on uh, Twitter, X, I'm at Randy J. Miller. And if well, you just do a search for 
randymillernj.com. Only my stories come up. <laughs> we have wow. a million Yankee stories come up. So those are mine. I usually, when I'm working the games, uh, and you mentioned earlier how I'd go to travel. I'm turning 60 on July 10th, and I'm taking off about 10 days and doing a dream vacation, uh, flying to Mount Rushmore for a few days, driving through North Dakota, Montana, Wyoming, uh, Yellowstone for a few days, Grand Teton, Twin Lakes, Idaho, uh, Salt Lake City, Utah. So I'm going to get to appreciate some of this uh, this beautiful part of the world that I haven't seen. Wow. I, I hope that you can take those 10 days off without having to do any special writing, you know, for whatever reason. And I hope your your wife, well, what's your wife's first name? Her name is Diane. Diane. We're both Pittsburghers. She's, she's home a, a lot in Pittsburgh. A lot, home a lot in, uh, we live, clo we still live close to Philadelphia because I was a Philly writer for so long. Yeah. So I'm closer to Philly. So I'm in a hotel where I'm at now. I'm a hotel for home games. So I'm not home a whole lot, but in the winter, I get a lot of time off and uh, that's where we, you know, we try to make uh, in the summer, a couple days for Myrtle beach and a couple days for Lauderdale, even oh. though the Jersey shore isn't too far from me. We both want warm water at the beach. Yeah. I want to go in and I want it to be like bath water. I don't yeah. want to have to go into my toes and they're cold. So no, I'm the same no way. Jersey shore. No Jersey I can't shore. Cold. <laughs> yeah. I, I like wet, but not cold, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, brother. God bless you, friend. Thank you. You too. Thanks for having Peace me. Randy. Thank you. Bye. Coming up. There we go. And the book, The Man, and Hope is All We Have. And there's a picture of me in the back, so that means I wrote the book. And God wrote it through me. I, I, I assure you, I'm not that smart. This book is, uh, is rediscovering Jesus. It's finding him for such a time as this. It's finding him in Donald Trump. So Donald Trump isn't Jesus, but you find him in Donald Trump. You find him in in the uh, uh, there's a boxer who 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 beat up a guy. He murdered him in the ring. You find him as the guy that you beat up. Jesus shows up. The man shows up. He doesn't give it all away. He wants you to know him again through verbs and adjectives before you can say, "Oh, he's God." Okay, I'll get guilty guilt trip again. No. And we deal with current events in this book, and it comes out. This book is relevant. Uh, ADVBookstore.com advbookstore.com. Ron will give you some information where you can get the book and uh, you can contact us. Uh, we can sign it for you. We want to come to your church and do one of our presentations. Lately, I'm doing the Cleopas story, which is based on this. It's a one-man show, so I could just come and do it for you. God bless you. Thank you for participating in our Narrowgate News Show. We hope you have experienced with our host, Dennis Cole, great insight into current events. Our vision is that Narrowgate News inspires a hunger to know what's happening in our world today, that this broadcast challenges your faith to grow closer to God, and it encourages you to share more love and truth with others. We look forward to sharing more with you on our next broadcast of Narrowgate News with host Dennis Cole.